Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we saw the color index table, we realized that on the right side of that column were the appropriate temperatures for the type of stars that we're dealing with. And here we're going to show you how those temperatures were calculated. Now, of course, we also have the Wien's Law technique, but this is better because it accounts for the type of light that we get from each type of star because there's variations between the stars that the color index, the B minus V color index, does account for. So let's calculate the surface temperature by, for, for the Sun and the surface temperature for Sirius using this B minus V color index, index technique. So the equation reads as follows. It's 4600 Kelvin times what's inside the brackets and there's two fractions. It's 1 over 0.92 times the B minus V color index plus 1.7 plus 1 over 0.92 times the color index plus 0.62. It's an interesting equation, but it works. So here, let's try it for the sun. So this is equal to 4600 times, and I'll leave off the Kelvin symbol, 1 over 0 0.92 times B minus V for the sun is 0 0.656. So 0 0.656, and then plus 1.7, and then we add 1 over 0 0.92 times 0 0.656, plus 0 0.62. All right, now we're going to need a calculator. Let's see what that's equal to. So for the first fraction, I'm going to solve each fraction separately so we can see what it looks like. So we have uh, one, uh, well, let me do this first. So we have 0 0.92 times 0 0.656 plus 1.7. And then we take the inverse of that. So we get the temperature for the sun is equal to 4,600 Kelvin, let's put a Kelvin there anyway, times, so the first fraction gives us 0 0.4341 out to four decimal places, plus, now the second fraction, uh, 0.92 times 0 0.656 plus 0 0.62. Now we take the inverse of that, and we get plus 0 0.8173, 8173. So now let's combine those two. So time, the temperature for the sun is equal to 4,600 Kelvin times 0 0.4341 plus 0 0.8173. We get 1.2514. Now if we multiply that times 4,600, and we get 5,000. 756 Kelvin, which is very close to the calculated and observed temperature, surface temperature of the Sun. Now let's do the same thing for Sirius, and notice since B minus V for Sirius is zero, it's actually a pretty easy calculation. So this is equal to 4600 Kelvin times 1 over 0 plus 1.7 plus 1 over 0 plus 0 0.62. So we'll do the same thing, we'll calculate them separately. So 1 divided by 1.7 equals, we get 0 0.588, uh, 2, we'll use four decimal places, plus uh, 1 divided by 0.62 equals, and we get 1.6129, 6129. Now let's compare what we have over here and notice both of these numbers for Sirius are bigger than the two numbers we got for the Sun, which means higher temperature because after all, it's an A-class star rather than a G-class star. And so this becomes equal to uh, 4,600 times, let's add those two together, 0 0.5882, oh, yeah, 5882. Uh, plus 1.6129, so we get 2.2811, multiply it times 4600, and we have a surface temperature of 10,125 Kelvin, so that's temperature of Sirius. I believe that the actual accepted value of the temperature series is slightly below 10,000, like 9,900 and something, but again, 
it's not an exact science when it comes to finding exact values. What is the real surface temperature of the sun, the real surface temperature series? It's close to these numbers, not absolutely exact, because through different techniques you get different, slightly different results. But it gives us very close. And once we get this very close, then we have a better means of finding the closer or the more accurate distance, or at least a distance with less uncertainty, uh, for the two stars. Now, of course, the Sun, that's not a problem, but for Sirius and other stars, this is how we do it. We then use the color index to get the temperature of the stars, and then we use that to find the luminosity, ultimately the absolute magnitude, and then we calculate the distance. So stay tuned, and we'll show you how to do that as well. It's not a simple technique, is it? Yeah, it takes a lot of work, but that's, that's the nature of it, especially in, in measuring distances or calculating distances. It's a tough thing to do in astronomy. All right, so on to the next one.